I remember when I met you seems like only yesterday you were the one I had always searched for and on wings of love we flew away and every moment you're in my heart oh the more i love you still and our love keeps growing stronger after all these years after all these years i still love to hear your name after all these years your faithfulness is still the same lord you've been with me in times of laughter and you wiped away my bitter tears and I love you, and I love you. Lord, I love Lord, you I love even you. more. After all these years, looking back on all that we've been through, I still don't regret a mind there were times when it was just me and you in the midst of the fiery trials and I wonder if I would make it oh but you were there my fear and my love keeps growing stronger after all these years after all these years I still love to hear your name After all these years, your faithfulness is still the same. Lord, you've been with me in times of laughter, and you wiped away my bitter tears. I love you, I love you. Lord, I love, Lord I love you even more after all these years. Lord, you've been with me in times of laughter, and you wiped away my bitter tears. And I love you, Lord, I love you even more after all these years. And I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amen. And you've been good to us. God is so good to us. My, my, my. And all these years, He's never failed me, not one time. Never let me down, never disappointed me. 
but he's always been there when you need him most. Praise God. What I want to talk to you about today may not be a, a conference or a meeting as such, but I really sought the Lord about what I would say here today, as I always do. I don't take this pulpit area very lightly at all. And so I uh, was hesitant to, um, to uh, bring to you what I feel in my heart, but I couldn't get away from it. And I, I just kept trying to find something, you know, different and uh, to no avail. So only preachers understand that. They understand that. But what I want to preach to you about today is something of uh, personal experience that I will tell you about later in my life. So if you'll stand with me, I want to read from the book of Philippians chapter 4. Um, this is a very familiar passage of Scripture to us Pentecostals, and uh, I know you could probably quote it uh, by heart. But let me read it to you um, briefly. Philippians chapter 4. Verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which patheth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Now, that's very important. I want you to get that. Through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. And then going to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, I want to read in conjunction with this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Now, I want to impress that word on you, to stand. Therefore, stand therefore, having your lawns girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all supplication. Prayer and supplication in the Spirit. That's important. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I want to pray. Father, I come to you, Lord, today knowing that I can do nothing. But I ask you, Lord, to uh, please help me today. I pray, Lord, that what we have to say there is someone here today that uh, will understand and know what I am saying. We pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would rest upon us more than anything else. And we will love you for it and praise you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated. My subject or thought is the unseen war. The Unseen War. Nobody likes a war. Why? Because they're costly, first of all. Lives are lost. 
and people die. Wars destroy properties. They leave death and destruction in their way. The facts are we all are right now in an unseen war. An unseen war. We don't use guns or knives. We don't use airplanes or missiles or tanks or ships. We are not firing off missiles and rockets at our opponents, our enemies. No, we're not in a war of such things, but we are in a worse war than all of that. We are in an unseen spiritual war right now. And Paul talked about it in his uh, book of Romans and in Ephesians, in which I have read to you today. It is a time today for us to seek God like we never have before because we are in a battle. We are in a war for our spiritual lives. It's a war for the mind, the soul of mankind. In order for us to win this war, we must put on the whole armor of God because the battle is not going to be won physically. It is a spiritual combat that all of us, sooner or later, will experience in our own lives. So we must put on the whole armor of God. We must stand in faith. That's important. We must know who we're fighting against. He is the God of this world, none other than the devil himself. And I'm not here to give praise to him. I'm simply here to tell you, you have an opponent that is out for your soul and for your mind's destruction. Now here's what he's called. He's called a liar, a deceiver, a slanderer. He is an accuser. He is an adversary. He is the enemy of our soul. He is the darkness, angel of darkness. He is powerful. He is called by many other names as well. He is called by Lucifer, our father of angels. He is the ruler of this world. In other words, this is a pretty bad dude. He really is. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, Paul describes him as the little God, a small g of this world. He's not very big, but my, does he evermore have a lot of things to do and things that he can do to us if we're not careful. I want to bring you an illustration to prove that. In the book of Job, I want to talk about his life. If you look at chapter 1, all of us know the, the, the story. I won't linger a long time on it. But uh, the story is that uh, Job was a perfect and right, upright man, the Bible said. And the story is that the devil came one day and the Lord asked him, said, uh, where have you been? He said, I've been walking up to and fro in the earth, seeking somebody to devour. And, and, and the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? None like him in there. He's a perfect and upright man. None like him. And the devil said, yeah, I know about Job, but you got a hedge built around him, and nobody can touch him. We all know that. He's blessed of you. You bless everything he does. Everything he touch his hand, puts his hand to, you bless it. And the, and the Lord said, well, now, I'll just tell you what. You, you, you just go ahead and you, you try him. I, I, I believe that Job will stand the test. I really do. So you have at it. You do whatever you want to do, but don't you touch his life. And here's the stories. In Job chapter 1, verses 5 through 12. And it was so when the days of their feasting were done about that Job sinned and sanctified them and rose up early in the mornings and offered burnt offerings and sacrifices according to the numbers of all of them. For Job said, It may be that thy sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And he went on about to tell about what he was going to offer sacrifice. In chapter 
1 and chapter 2, Satan tries to destroy Job's life. He attacks him with boils from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And I read the story over again, as we often have read many, many times. We've read this story. While he was, uh, and, 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 and here he is, he's scraping his boils, and he goes on to say, I, I cursed the day I was born. I mean, he gets down. He's low. He's in terrible pain, and he's suffering. And I just wish I'd have never been born. Curse the day I was born. And he goes on and his tantrum about his suffering. Now, this is caused by the devil. I want you to know that. And so in chapter 1 and 2, Satan, he talks about it. And while he was, he was talking about his family and what was happening, and, and while he was yet speaking, there was a man came and he said, Hey, Job, I won't tell you that there, there, there's a, a, a man came and they destroyed your oxen and, and they destroyed your uh, sheep. And he went on and there were three or four different occasions. And I won't go in to take time to go into all of them this morning. But everywhere it looked like Job turned, it was bad news. Bad news. Now I want to just simply mention a few things about Job. He had seven sons, three daughters. He had oxen, he had sheep, he had donkeys, he had uh, servants. And in fact, he was a very rich and very powerful man. But uh, in the midst of the course of all this, and if you'll read chapter 1, verse 13, verses 14 and 15, and a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the, Sin the Sabians attacked and carried up them all off, and thy servant only is left alone to tell you. And then in verse 16, he says, And while he was yet speaking, another messenger came and said, The fire of God fell from the sky and burned up the sheep and all the servants, and I only left to tell you. Verse 17, And while he was speaking, another messenger came. Now I'm talking about Something that the devil is doing. And the messenger came, Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on the camels and carried them all off. And I'm the only servant left to tell you about it. Sorry about it, Job. Then in verse 18 and 19, while he was yet speaking, another messenger came. Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine in the older brother's house. And suddenly a wind, a whirlwind, mighty wind, swept from the desert structures and four windows of the house fell, collapsed. All dead. Now I'm only left to tell you about it. Now, it finally came to the point that Job had some friends. It, you know, <laughs> some friends that you'd be better off without. Uh, just to be honest with you, but he had he had these three friends, and as I was reading this. Did you know the Bible said they sat with Job for seven days and they never said a word, never opened their mouths until later. And in chapter 3, you read more about his miseries. But Job opened not his mouth. He did not accuse God, but he simply took on the attitude Lord, if this is what it takes, I'm going to stand faithful and true. Hallelujah. If you look at verse, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11, there are nine lets. Let the day perish wherein I was born and the night in which I, it was said that there's a man child conceived. There's nine of these. Let the day be dark. Let not God regard it. From above, neither the light of the shine that's on it. Let not darkness or shadows of death stain it. And he goes on. For the night, the darkness is seized. And he goes on to say, Let not, let it not come upon the members of the months. Let lo, let that night be solitary. Let no joyful voice therein be heard. Let them curse 
it the day, the curse the day. And he goes on. There's nine of those, so I won't go into them. But I really believe with all of my heart, I believe we all are going to go through the war, the battle. In Daniel, there's another illustration there that, that when Daniel prayed for the Lord to help him and deliver him, you remember the story how that the, he came, the angel came and said, Daniel, I heard you the first day you prayed, but I had war in heaven with the angels. And they stopped me, and I had to call for help. Now, you're talking about a war. You're talking about unseen war. There was war in heaven over a man who loved God and was doing his will and his purpose in his life. So I just wanted to bring these illustrations to you and let you know that we are in this war. Now, I don't, I don't want you to think bad of me when I do this, but I, I just want to tell you. If the devil picked on Job, and he picked on Daniel, he is a brazen devil. Here he comes, and he's taking on the Son of God. In Mark, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 10. And Jesus was led in the wilderness, in the dark, and was tempted of the devil. After 40 days of fasting, and he hungered, the Bible said. And the tempter came to him and said, If this, oh, here, oh, if. It seems to always be. And if there, thou be the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, you would have thought that had been enough for the devil. But no, he goes on, chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Then the devil taketh them up into the holy city and set them on the pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, it's, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. In their hands they shall bear thee up, lest it thou any time dash thy foot against a stone. That's two. Well, let's just go on. You know, he, never gets, he, he never gets satisfied with what he's doing. Jesus saith unto him, this is this. He said, and the devil again took him into a very high mountain and showed him all the kings of the world. Everything, everything. And he said, now, <clears throat> all this I'll give you if you'll just bow down and worship me. Jesus said, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and Him only. Serve Him. Hallelujah. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. This is what we got to do, folks. We got to do it. We must resist the devil because he is out to destroy your soul your mind, and your body. We are tempted on every side, says the Scripture, but we are not defeated. We have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are on the winning side. Hallelujah. We are fighting a war for the death. And the only reason why I brought this to you today is because of a personal experience that I had. And I hope you don't get mad at me or think I'm some renegade, but we must all remember that we are in a war. In Philippians 4, 6, and 8, think on these things. He said, and I read them to you, all of them. We must take authority over the devil in Jesus' name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous rather than to are safe. We must tap into the power of prayer and fasting if we're to overcome this slew-foot devil. 
So why does Satan attempt and oppose us so much? Because you're a potential source of pleasure to the Lord. You are. The devil attempts to attack us and those that are closest to us because he wants to defeat us. That means me and you, he does, he does all of this because he does not want us as God's people to give God glory. He wants to take and make us bow to him and be succumbed by his power and authority. But I want to tell you that in the name of Jesus Christ, we will take authority over the devil and we will win. Amen. Hallelujah. A couple of years ago, and I'll get on with this. I know I only have a limited time here, but a couple of years ago, I went through um, one of the greatest trials of my life. Well, earlier than that, when I was uh, about 18 years old, I, I went through a time when Satan attacked me. And uh, uh, he, kept, he told me I didn't have the Holy Ghost. And he, he just, he, I'd, I'd go through and pray through, and the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost all over again. And, and it wouldn't be another week or so, and the Lord, the, the devil here, he perches over here, he says, you know, it's all emotion. You didn't really get anything. You just got all excited. And I'd pray through and speak in tongues, and I said, now, you see that devil? I got the Holy Ghost. You, see, you understand that? But he, that, he didn't take no for an answer. No, he just kept on coming back. So about 1 o'clock in the morning at camp meeting in Lufkin, Texas, I got three or four or five preachers, woke them up. I got them up. I said, I got to have some help. And I got them up. We went way down in the piney woods. I don't know, if maybe six or 700 yards off in the woods. And, and I, we had a prayer meeting. I'm telling you, we had prayer meeting. We had a prayer meeting, and we, we, when we got through praying and got done with that episode, the devil left, and they never came back with that. You didn't get anything. It's the, that's what the devil likes to do, make you think you didn't get anything. And then all these years, I've been preaching and pastoring, evangelizing, and enjoying the presence of God. About two years ago, I, the devil, and it was the devil, came and tried to take over my mind. And he told me all kinds of things. He, told, he brought up every mistake I ever made. He's an accuser of the brethren. Don't think it's strange when you go through fiery darts of the wicked because it's going to happen. And so he attacked me. And he attacked my body. And I was going through it. I lost over 25 pounds. I could not eat. I couldn't sleep. I prayed, and I prayed, I prayed, I fasted, and I prayed, and I prayed. And for several months, I went through the worst episode of my life. And I finally, I finally, through my fasting and prayer, and I went to two of my preacher friends that I knew, knew how to touch God, and I called them, and I went, and I had them pray for me. And from that hour on, the devil left. That doesn't mean he stays gone. But I'm telling you, there's victory in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil told me you're, gonna, you're not going to survive. I won't tell you what God said in his word. He said, I have promised you a sound mind. And I stood on that. When I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, I was a miserable wreck. 
my kids carried me to the doctor, carried me to the hospital, and they examined me, run all kinds of tests, and they said, we can't find anything wrong with him. We finally said, we'll, we'll make an appointment with a psychiatrist for him. He, he needs to see a psychiatrist. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, and I said, I don't need a psychiatrist. I told my kids, I said, I don't need, am I crazy? No, Dad, no, Dad, you're not. But I said, there's something wrong with you. You're not like you used to be, all jolly and happy and, and, and full of vigor, and, and you want to go and do it. Uh, there's something wrong with you, Dad. We, and they, just, they made up their mind. They're going to find out what physically was wrong with me. But I knew what I was, I knew what I was going through with. Now, I'm preaching this today because God laid this in my soul. Somebody needs to understand if you're going through it right now. If you're fighting the battle of your life, if you're, everything in your world is turned upside down, if everything that you ever fought for seems to be disintegrating and falling apart, let me just tell you, stand Stand where you are. Stand and defy the devil. For we have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory. Praise God. And the enemy will do everything he can to destroy you. Now, if he, if he picked on Job, and he picked on Daniel, and then he attacked the Son of God, now, folks, I know you think you're strong, and you think sometimes, well, that won't ever happen to me. Well, don't, don't, don't count your eggs for the hatch, you know, here. I'm just telling you that if you're not careful, when you think you stand, take heed, lest you fall. I have been serving the Lord, like I told you, since I was 11 years old. I've never in my life ever had anything like this to happen to me. And like Job's friends, he said, you know, they come around and say, well, Brother Shindal, what have you done wrong? What, 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 you, what happened to you? And, 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 and they told all kinds of stories, you know, there's something bad wrong with Brother Shindal. What's wrong with him? But I want to tell you, God brought me through that. And I went soaring. With such joy and such peace and happiness because I'm doing what God said to do. And the devil don't like it when you're doing what God wants you to do. He'll fight you over everything. He will not give up. We must never forget that we're on the Lord's side. I read the back of the book, we win. We win, folks. I'm telling you. So whatever's coming or going in your life, whatever you think that you can't get over or, that, or you're facing obstacles, you think is, you just can't get over that, you can't climb over it, let me tell you to stand, stand, stand. Take on the whole arm of God. Take on faith. I know I'm getting a little excited here, but I, I can't help it. I, I'm going to tell you, when, you, when you come through something I went through, and God marvelously, this marvelous power brought me through victorious, I sh only shout and praise God for who He is. Hallelujah. He said this. Jesus said, you're made overcomers through the blood and the power of Jesus. Be thankful to Him. Bless His name. Don't ever forget who you're serving and how powerful He is and how great He is, how marvelous He is. I would sit on my front porch at the farm and rock. I was so sick. I didn't know what just didn't know what else I was going to do. All I knew to do is what God said, stand. You know what I actually did? I went and actually got my Bible, and I got that. I stand on it. 
That's how desperate I got. God, your word is forever true. Every man's a liar, but you're God and you're true. You do not lie. And I stood on his word. And I'm telling you, folks, when you come through that, when the joy of the Lord is refreshed and you feel the Holy Ghost start stirring in your soul, I want to tell you that it's rejoicing time. It's shouting time in the church. But you got to take on the whole armor of God because let me tell you what is out to destroy your mind. It's your mind He wants to destroy. He wants to take over your thoughts. That's why I had you read that. I read it with you there a while ago. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are... And he goes through them and he said, now you've got to control what you think. You've got to think on that. I read my Bible day and night. I prayed day and night. I mean, I, I, I did everything I know to do. Nobody ever had told me before or preached to me that I would ever have such a trial to go through. But I took God at His Word. And children, let me tell you, His Word cannot lie. If it's in the written in the Bible, I'm going to believe it till I die, till I die, till I die. He is my Savior, my Lord, my Master, my King. And I went through all the names of God just the other day. Man, are they ever more? There's just bunches of them. But it's when you're attacked and you are the person the devil's trying to destroy. Maybe this will help you to understand. Stand fast. Don't give up. Don't turn to drugs. Don't go out and, and, and throw it all away. Don't say, well, there's no, I, I can't make it. I, I, there's no use for me doing it anymore. I, I, I'm about to go crazy anyway. And just give up. No, you don't do that. You stand on God's eternal, never dying word. And I can't tell you, Brother Chance, the joy the joy that came into my soul. I was reading it this last week. Rejoice. He said, rejoice. And then I say again unto thee, rejoice in the Lord, for it is our strength. Hallelujah. So if you're battling Satan, You just keep on trusting the Lord, walking with God, because we're winning the battle. He won it for us at Calvary, at resurrection. He came out of the grave. Don't you know he's not going to let us down? He's going to come wrap his arms around you, love you like you've never been loved before, and let you know of a surety. He's there with you in the midst of your conflict. He never leaves us, never forsakes us, but He'll be with us always, always. Even though I couldn't seemingly sense that at the time. But I know in whom I put my faith and my trust in. His name is Jesus. And there's a song that uh, a preacher friend of mine wrote. I said, Joaquin, can I sing this song? He said, Orwell, you just go ahead and sing it. I just, you just help yourself. And it's called, The Battle Is Not Mine. I want to sing it for you in closing. Okay, can I do that? Hallelujah. I love this song. And you ready? To, I'm ready to sing it. Yeah. This, but, wow. is not mine the battle is the Lord's the battle is not mine the battle is the Lord there's no enemy can stand when the Lord is in command so let's shout the 
life in his hand. Now there's a battle to be fought in the life of every man. Sometimes in the battle, we've done all we can. The devil says it's over. There's no way that you can stand. But the battle's not mine. The battle's in his hand. Well, the battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord. The battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord. There's no enemy can stand while the Lord is in command. So let us shout throughout the land, the battle's in his hand. Hallelujah! There was a shepherd boy named David who came up against a giant. Goliath stood like a mountain tall and in the spirit of defiance. He said, I'm a dog that I should fight you. You're a lad and not a man. But the battle's not mine. The battle's in his hand. Well, sometimes in the journey of life, you'll have a giant to fight. But if you'll stand in the name of the Lord and in the power of his might, tell that giant that he can't win. He must understand the battle's not mine. The battle's in his hand. Well, the battle is not mine. The battle, is not mine. The battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord. There's no enemy can stand while the Lord is in command. So let us shout throughout the land. The battle's in his hand. In his hand. Oh, let us shout throughout the land. The battle's in his hand. Let us shout throughout the land. The battle's in his hands. Hallelujah. Woo! Can you say amen to that? The battle's in his hands. And we're going to fight and stand for righteousness. Hallelujah. And give our precious and blessed Lord praise and honor and glory to his marvelous name. God bless you today. Amen.